Hi, this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. So, welcome to my uh, Sunday Orchid chat. Well, mostly orchids. So, what have we got in store today? Okay, so in a packed video today, what will we have? We will have a report on yesterday's Bournemouth Orchid Society show, how that went, how my plants did. Did we come home with anything that we didn't go with? Well, yes, we did. We have to wait and see. So we do have a new orchid. We have a new bloom to have a look at. I want to summarise... Um, <laughs> the response to the video I put out, you know, the most important video. I, for the first time ever, didn't get my comments finished and I had to leave them <laughs> until the next day because there were so many. I can't thank you enough. Out of that has come some good stuff. So we'll go over that. And um, we've decided on the format for the uh, Project Orchids, I don't need to go into that, I just need to say that you'll probably get the first one this week. The video that I took of the show yesterday is in a different format. It's not what I usually do, but I think by the time I put the clips together you're going to get something... film of an orchid show that you haven't seen before. Okay? That will not be today. <laughs> that will probably be tomorrow. But anyway, talking of today, let's get on with today. So, welcome. And first thing I'd like to do is give you an update on the show yesterday. Now, yesterday was Saturday. On Friday, I didn't feel well in the evening. Came on in the evening and I thought, I'm going downhill. Hopefully not down with something, just downhill. And it got to the point where I thought, I'm, I'm just not comfortable. Am I going to be able to go to the show? And I thought, well, the best thing you can do when you're not well is rest under normal circumstances. I'll go to bed early. <laughs> not difficult for me, so we did just that. And then we got up at half past ten, not well. This is <laughs> half past ten in the evening. Most people haven't even gone to bed by then, let alone gone to bed and had to get up again. And then we got up at two o'clock again. And then we got up at four o'clock. And I knew at that point that one, I wasn't actually feeling unwell anymore, and two, I wasn't going to get back to sleep, so I'll get up and get on with my, see what comments I've got from, from that um, important video. <laughs> and I started to scroll down, because you start at the stop, and I scrolled, and I scrolled, and I scrolled, and I scrolled. I thought, I've never seen anything like that, and I haven't. Quite honestly, that's more comments on a single video than I've ever had on a single video. And I just can't thank you enough. Um, I'm going to have to spend quite a few hours going back through those comments, taking notes. There are some wonderful ideas in there. Put that to one side. Right, back to the show. So anyway, we're up. <laughs> we're up in plenty of time to go to the show. I've just spotted a bud. Spotted a bud. Bug, bud out of the corner of my eye. My teeth just won't work lately. <laughs> I think whoever's they are needs to take them back and I'll have mine. Um, but I've just spotted a, bu uh, a bud. And if you know the grow room reasonably well, if I'm looking that way, what's it going to be? You can think about that. I'll show you in a minute, obviously. Um, yes, so the show. So it's a, it's a bright and early start on the grounds that there's limited parking right outside the door. There is lots of other parking in the pay car park and that's a fair old walk. And I had the sound system to carry in, which is heavy. A flipping great speaker in there, you know. So I thought, I'll get there early. I need a parking space where I can load and unload. 
and if necessary and it gets a bit crowded or anything I can always move my car afterwards and bring it back at the end of the day I didn't need to but so that was the theory I'll get there nice and early because I got there nice and early lots of other people had the same idea but I got my space and uh, started unloading <laughs> another little thing as well I managed to remember to take Lynn's Welsh Moss that I've been you know, trying to get to her since, I don't know, in October last year or whatever, quite a while ago, so I remember that, and um, that was the last thing in the car to unload, and Lynn had arrived, and um, <clears throat> I, I said, do you want that moss? Put it in your car now, while we're, while we're both here, then it won't get forgotten, and started nattering, and wandered off into the building. Halfway through the morning, somebody comes in and says, have you got a Volvo estate, Roger? I said, yeah. He said, well, <laughs> your tailgate's open. <laughs> it's been open all morning. It's good job there's nothing in there worth nicking. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we, we got unpacked and we got in there. I got the sound system set up. Um, I took my laptop with me because I knew they had Wi-Fi. And I thought, if I get some quiet time, I might actually try and finish off my comments from that video. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, people brought plants in. I took my two. And um, once they've got the cloths on the table and they've got the sections marked out and the classes, um, I got told off for not filling my um, entry forms, you know, with my plant names and the classes electronically and sending them to, Jen, uh, to Glenn in advance of the show so that he can have everything ready and the, the labels ready to put on the plants with the names. So I got told off for that, and I said, well, have we got a paper version? Yes, well, give us a pen and I'll fill it in. <laughs> I've been busy. Anyway, so that was done. Um, treasurer arrived. I got, um, obviously, I've got this coach trip being organised, and um, the, the treasurer needs to talk, take the money and write names down on the list and stuff. So I've got to add my list and everything. I've got all that set up and ready. And I thought, well, I've done everything I need to do now. And... Um, there's a quiet point for, <laughs> once you've got your plants on the table, there's a gap where the judging text takes place prior to the public coming in. And under normal circumstances, everybody has to get out, even the traders. So they have to be set up prior to judging. They, and nobody's allowed in while the judging takes place, except me. <laughs> Why do I get an exemption? Press. Yeah, I've got to take all the photos, haven't I? And follow them round. And there was one plant got photographed anyway, then it got an award, so it gets a little plaque, so I took a photo again. Then it got another one, so I took another photo, and then it got a third. That was best in show, I think. So I took four photos of the same plant. Obviously only one of them's any good. It's the last one, the one that had all three awards on. But this is the problem. You know, they, they walk round with one of these things in their hand, Wittering away to themselves, and you sort of think, the public are going to be in in a minute, toss a coin or something. <laughs> yeah. That will come. Several people have asked about the criteria for judging. Well, I did do a video a long time ago, which went over the point system, but at a show like that, the judging's done differently. They don't go to the extent of writing down the points for the sections, the categories, um, to come to a total. It's done by eye and discussion, quite honestly, which goes into long-term experience and the training that you get to become a um, British Orchid Council judge. So, uh, yeah, but the logic of how it's done, <laughs> some people are just agog because they can't work out how the hell that plant came first and that one didn't. Well, there is a bit of bias and there is a bit of personal taste. There is also the sort of long-term experience that's difficult to explain. Like if, like with me, I, I grow a lot of dendrobiums, like um, a certain dendrobium, for instance, that I've owned for years and years and know what it's capable of over that length of time. And then you see one in a show that's got a rather spectacular blooming that you know full well is, is only a few years you know, from reaching blooming size. It's not really a specimen plant at all, but it looks like the best plant in the show. But it's not. And this is where the 
judging comes in and makes people wonder, well, why didn't that one come first? Well, sometimes it's that. It's not the best that plant can be. And that judge has seen many plants much better than that one. So although it's okay at this show, for that plant, it's not as good as it should be. And these are the sort of things that it's difficult to even write it down. Anyway, judging got done. Roger did his photos. And what I'll do is now I'll add in, what, well, these, the photos I took are all for the magazine. Um, so, you know, they, they don't normally get shown on YouTube. But what I'll do now is I'll put up some stills of the bit that I'm allowed to do because I'm editor of the magazine. We have editor's choice. So out of what was there, these are some stills, editor's choice. Okay, so that's just some stills of the ones, the ones I liked. <laughs> and what about that, that O'Donnell? Oh, <laughs> I was dribbling. <laughs> anyway, so uh, anyway, the, the, the public came in, um, met se several people that watched the YouTube channel, um, including somebody I've met a couple of times, um, actually bought some of my plants, and um, yeah, so... Uh, Quite honestly, the show was busy. Now, we had a lovely sunny day, like what today is going to be. Now, that can go against you when you live quite close to the coast, because people get up and think, Ugh, it's all wet and miserable. We were going to go to that show. Oh, I'm not going out in this. They don't come. And then you get the next stage of weather where like, there's a bitter cold wind or something, but the sun's shining. And you know, people sort of think, are we going to go or not? We're going to have to wrap up warm, and they may come. And then you get the just the cloudy, ordinary sort of day. It's not raining, it's not bright sunshine, but it's okay. It's not freezing cold. That's when the people come to the show. But when they don't come to the show is when it's relatively mild. It's a beautiful blue sky because it's much nicer to take the dog for a walk on the beach, isn't it? So they don't come. So we were lucky because we had one of those bright sunny days and we had... I think it was 300 and something through the door, uh, paying customers. So uh, in addition to that, Karen as treasurer logged in, I think it was six new members, five of which paid on the day. <laughs> I remember somebody saying once, well, as long as they pay on the day, I don't care if they never come again. <laughs> well, that's not the attitude. And she said quite a few of them were younger people. Yeah, and that's what we need. As the old ones drop off the end, like I will one day, we need younger ones coming in at the bottom. Now we've got that flipping great helicopter going over. It won't be long and it'll be gone. It's just moving across. It's not in a hurry, it's just going along nicely. Don't want to use too much fuel, it's expensive, do we? So that's that. So that was the show. I think a good time was had by all. I certainly had a good day, but I got home absolutely cream crackered, and I mean that. My back hurt. I shouldn't, I like forget. You get chatting to people and that. I do that a bit. Um, and you stay on your feet. And when you've got a back that can be a bit iffy, you don't do that. You take a break and you sit. And then perhaps you have a walk round. There's quite a lot of standing still, but it's standing up, and that's the bit that does my back. So I came home with backache. I was also absolutely shattered because I'd had a lousy night's sleep. Um, <laughs> so we did another early night, but we didn't get all the disturbances this time, so we're okay now. We're fine. So that's the show. Um, the video clips that I took you will get in the not too distant future. And as I said, I've done it differently this time. Um, yeah, well, wait and see. Right, so that's that bit. Now what else are we going to do? We're going we're gonna to have a look at some blooms and that bud that I've just spotted. But to do that, I need to move some things around. So I'll shut down for a bit. 
I'll be back. Okay, we're on the move now. Um, and this is the Mazda Valia that came from Mix Mazda Valias, um, which I did say I wanted to buy, and he said, you're not buying it, you're having it. Um, nonetheless, appreciated. It's Inca Prince, Mazda Valia Inca Prince. The um, component parts are there. It's uh, Viciana with Angel Frost. Anything with frost in it is probably going to be nice. Um, and that bud has snuck up on me. Because I didn't see that coming. Last time I watered this, I didn't see any sign of a bud. But it could have been hiding behind a leaf. They can do that. But um, anyway, so we've got a bud on a Mazda Valia to go with the only bloom that's out on the Mazda Valia's sort of stuff at the moment. The Dracula Bella does have a bud. Oh, if I can get down there. My knees hurt like hell yesterday evening when I got home. It's just standing up all day and a lot of that time standing still. So that's Dracula Bella and that's got a, a nice bud pushing on. And certainly the last bud didn't blast. We actually had the bloom at long last and it's probably due to the lack of heat. You know, I'm not getting the heat now. Um, nice, even light, you know, evenly moist, <laughs> that daft expression. Um, but this one gets absolutely drowned when I water it because it's in the cocoa husk and it's got such big holes in the basket, you know, it drains straight through. So we got, we're going to have a bloom on there soon. Oh, getting down is okay. Getting up ain't so good. Ouch. But what we have got is that. Ah, isn't that a beauty? That colour in the centre and the veining and the way it's... So I'm moving around to the side so that you can see sort of inside the lip to a degree. It's a nice pristine white and um, after a relatively short amount of time it will turn papery and it becomes almost transparent. You can see already, you can almost see through it. Yeah? And that's Dendrobium infundibulum. It's got two more huge buds over the back of the plant, which will be open soon. Unfortunately, they're a long way apart and facing in opposite directions, so it would be difficult to film all three blooms at the same time. But I'm well pleased with that. That could last as long as three months, that bloom. Absolutely stunning. And it's on, you know, a good cane. Yeah, it's on a good cane. I say that and then I'll say, but the cane that I grew is behind it. That's my cane. <laughs> now again, just going back to the judging. I've seen lots of infundibulums with canes this size, but I haven't seen one with a cane that size. Now imagine if I had a plant with four or five canes that size, each with some blooms on, then it would be the star. Whereas one with canes this size is a little run of the mill, shall we say. But anyway, um, Nice bloom, very nice bloom. So that's new blooms done. But now we've got buds that sneak up on me as usual. Now this is my, um, come on brain, Miltoniopsis section. And as you know, I've got some species. Notoriously not easy to grow. Well, the, the hybrids aren't that easy for some people anyway. But in here is a primary cross. Uh, so I'm just shuffling stuff around so that I can lift this out. And the primary cross, cross, cross is called Venus. And we've got a spike. And hopefully we'll have more than one bloom on it. Now that's actually, it's a... Uh, can I read that? It's Vexillaria crossed with Phalaenopsis. Now I know that sounds daft. Um, <laughs> when I, we're talking about a Miltoniopsis and the species is called Phalaenopsis. I'm sorry, that's it. That's how it was named. So it, it, the species itself is Miltoniopsis Phalaenopsis. What the hell somebody was thinking then, I really don't know. But anyway, that, so that's my primary cross and we do have a bud, so we will have a flower on that down the road. And strangely enough, the sort of rather large vigorous hybrid that I've got that's grown some good roots and everything hasn't got any spikes 
despite having quite a few new growths. Oh, what's going on with that one? Anyway, it was, you know, things can sometimes stall for a while and then get going again. Who knows? Who knows? So that was that. Now we've got some developments. You have to bear in mind in my grow space we have a dendrobium period. I've got a lot of dendrobiums and they have a period. Now some dendrobiums, like that one, that's a, a black hair type, and um, they can bloom any time basically. They probably have a more predictable time when they're going to bloom, but they can push out blooms almost any time. Um, it depends on how long the cane has been a matured cane. That's what it's more down to. And as the canes can mature almost any time, that, that, that's the position you're in. Um, but I do have quite a lot of dendrobiums that have a seasonal growth. And they bloom at roughly the same time every year, and that's your lot. <laughs> and some of those blooms don't last too long. You might think, why on earth do you bother growing them? Well, I just do. I like them. Now, we've already seen the um, a film, yeah? And that's got a nice lot of buds down the length of the cane. Um, usually clusters of two, but sometimes three. And there's another cane, this little cane over here. This little short one has also got some buds coming. So there'd be two canes with blooms on. And out of the seasonal dendrobiums, that one will be first. We've already had a look at Dendrobium nesta, and the nubbins were, were virtually invisible, quite honestly. Well, they're starting to show a bit better now. That's that one. Some of the others, I mean, Friedrichsianum is seasonal, but that blooms like May-June time. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with winter resting or stuff like that, but it's still seasonal. Um, but what we have got, if I can move this carefully without tipping it over, one-handed, round here, is unexpected and it was a yahoo moment uh, nearly a happy dance not quite this little plant here has been suspect for a long time it was bought as primulinum variety laos which is a special variety because it has a, a deep yellow center which i really wanted and because it hasn't bloomed we haven't been able to determine whether that is really what it is because the canes don't look long enough Especially as I've grown some, okay, the new ones I grew were longer than the others, but they're still not long. But we do have buds, multiple. It's going to bloom. And when it blooms, we'll find out whether it is what it's supposed to be, whether it is what it says on the tin, or whether it's an imposter. Now, the one I was expecting to see some buds on is the one next to it, which is Tortilli. Um... But not a sign on that one yet, on the latest two uh, growths. And it could be one of those that blooms on the previous ones, which would be... Ha 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 ha! Man speak with forked tongue. We have a bud. So that's going to bloom as well. So both of those will be first time bloomers. And they will now. We, we, we do know that. We like that a lot. So that's another new discovery today. Um, so that's the new blooms and buds and stuff. So that's that section done. Right, on to the next bit. Okay, a review of all those massive amount of comments that came in um, on, about the channel and why it might be slowing down and this, that and the other. The number of ideas that have come out of that is dramatic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's lots of the stuff that people have come up with as ideas for doing things a bit differently or actually doing different things without diversifying to any great extent. Lots of people have liked the variety, you know, including the Tweety Birds and you know, a bit of bonsai, perhaps a bit of gardening. The variety lots of people like. Some people didn't like that so much. They said, it's an orchid channel. I come here to see orchids and learn about orchids. I don't want to see birds hanging off feeders. I've got that in my own garden. Fair enough. Also, people said about the fact that I have this, and most people don't. But, that doesn't stop me talking about other ways of growing. 
yeah, and people commented on that as well as, as, as okay, you grow in your grow room, you've got your set environment, but you do advise on other environments. You're often mentioning, you know, like, you know, people who can grow outside year round and things like that. Well, mentioning them's one thing, but I haven't got that practical experience of other ways of growing. Nonetheless, it's come out in too many comments that it needs to be done, therefore it will be so. I need to cover growing in the home much more thoroughly. No, I'm not picking up all the plants and dumping them in the middle of the lounge. That ain't happening. <laughs> we have a kitchen window sill with some phalaenopsis on. That's it. We're not suddenly dumping everything in the house, but that doesn't stop me talking about that and giving more advice for growing in the home. Things like one-offs. Okay, they're one-offs, but they could still be good. Things like a list of plants that are more suitable for growing in the home. And the different types of environment in the home. You know, north-facing north cool room. You know, <laughs> bay window facing south, baked in the sun all day long. You put your orchids in there to fry, you know. I mean, you can put them in an oven, but you can put them in that window. You know, so it's, there are many different environments within a home. You can have aids in a home extra humidity, perhaps a bit of air movement. These are all things that I can that I can go over because I have done them, even though I haven't done them for a while, because once upon a time all my orchids were growing in the home. So I don't feel like I'm cheating doing that bit. However, I can't grow outside in this country and it's no good how many people keep saying, well, you know, you've got a garden just there, why don't you put some out for the summer? It's not happening. It's bugs, slugs, snails, and I'm even encouraging the birds to come in. They'll have a peck at them as well. No, <laughs> they're not going outside. Plus, it's the hassle factor of putting them out there, bringing them back in, putting them out, bringing them back in. And we do get a lot of wet weather in this country, and that's not going to do them any good, being soaking wet all the time. Because even though it's summertime, if we get a period of damp, miserable weather, the chances are those night temperatures are going to drop. The sun's not been there. The way this country works is the sun comes out, warms up the land and all the bricks and everything like that, and they work like storage heaters to keep the night temperatures reasonable. Without that sun, the night temperatures still drop down. So we're not having plants outside. Nonetheless, a mass of brilliant ideas, and probably not quite as important, but it's still important, quite a big list of things that people would not want to see or would prefer not to see. And one of the things that puts quite a few people off is harping on about subscribers and thumbs up and stuff like that. I don't do it often, but we can cut that down. You know, that's, that's, that's not absolutely necessary. <laughs> I, mean, I normally only do it on Sunday anyway. And that's it, I've said it now, I'm not doing it again. That, that's it, that's all you're going to get. So I don't harp on about that. Some people have obviously got a bee in their bonnet that I do. I don't believe I do, anyway. But anyway, so there are some changes. There are changes that are coming along that were already in my mind, and you might not even notice them, but they are <coughs> tuning videos on the channel to work with YouTube. You might not notice the difference, but uh, certainly the Sunday chat video probably isn't going to change because it doesn't need to, to any great extent. So it still seems to be the most popular. I'm in it. I don't mind doing that. I used to. I used to hate it. And OK, I need to be in more videos. That's become apparent. OK, I'll have to put a clean shirt on more often. Is that the end of the world? No. <laughs> I can manage that. I might have to get Hannah to cut me hair more often as well. That seems to generate more comments than a new bloom. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's that. But the fine tuning and tuning the channel to work with YouTube, rather than just be ju rather than just being static, do everything as I always have done, which means nothing's going to change as far as YouTube's view, is it? So little things, and they are chains, and it's very important. They're not difficult to do, but they do involve some planning. I'll have to use a bit of that, won't I? And that does involve more work, but it'll become a habit. I mean, you know, initially doing pop-ups and pictures of blooms was hard work until you get to do it and it just becomes, you do it with your eyes shut sort of thing, and this will as well. So the chains involve 
use of info cards at the beginnings of the videos. So you do a video on a, this is not Sunday chat type videos, it won't work. Um, and it will be shorter videos as well. This is where it works, where you've got say a, a, a 10 to 15 minute video on a precise subject, yeah? But I could well have other videos very close to that subject that I've already done, the work's already done. Info card plus some words in the video, if this subject appeals for me, to, to you, before we go on, perhaps you might want to watch this one, which is around the same subject and will give you some background for the rest of this video. Info card, it's a chain. It means you've got video one, now you've included video two, and you've come back to video one. <laughs> Hopefully, and not wandered off aimlessly for one of the ones down the side. And then you've also got end screens. Now, I use those for playlists frequently. Um, anybody who comes to my channel new and watches a single, the first ever video, they've just picked it off the side there. Oh, pretty orange and black orchids. Let's go and have a look at that on board. And they come and they start becoming interested. They're going to have to be pretty interested to still be there an hour later. Yeah? When an end screen pops up. And a lot of those end screens are a playlist which could have 20 videos in. <laughs> Who on earth is going to sit there and watch that? <laughs> so playlists don't work so well in that arena, yeah? But what does work is an end screen that follows on. Now it can't follow on without planning in advance, can it? Because if you're doing video one and you need to lead people into video two, you already need to have planned video two. And are you going to lead from two to three? You see what I'm getting at? It involves planning. And the thing that is always missing with my end screens is telling people that are watching the current video that they're coming up. <laughs> they're off, aren't they? You know, oh, this sounds like he's winding, winding down, time for a coffee, you know, and they're gone. So it's holding people. So you probably won't notice this that much. And it involves a bit of work for me, but we'll have a go at those few things to help YouTube and me as a, as a partnership, so that's it. You won't notice much differences. We, we like the field trips, we'll still, we're still going to do them. I'm, even, I'm going to try and combine some of the um, orchid hunts with butterflies as well, because a lot of the places I go are both, but that's a time of year thing. So we, <laughs> often the way that the orchids are going over, just as the butterflies are coming out, they're not there at the same time. But there are places where they will be together, so we'll have a go to some of that. Um, yeah, so I think really all I plan on doing is, um, apart from the new ideas that have come in, which I've got to go through all those comments to find and write down, I don't want this stuff getting lost. This is special. It's really important to me. So we will do that and get them all documented so that I can look them up. At, so I keep thinking I've seen another bug, but it's... Uh, it's that flipping um, Saracenia that, that's got a funny shape on it. It looks like a bud coming out of the plant behind it. Um, yeah, so we, we will fine-tune the way the videos work and we will bring introduce these new ideas from this big list that I've now got. And we will take on board... I always think of it like, um, you know, you've got like 10 tubes with 10 boxes of different coloured balls and you've got your 10 most popular ideas and every time that idea comes up in a comment you put a coloured ball in one of the columns that goes with that idea and at the end you've got your columns that look like this and you've got one that's up here well that's the one that's the most popular isn't it so well, that's the way that made my mind will work and um, the things that have come up that are not so popular well we can either not do so much of them or phase them out but the trouble is, I've always said, you can't please all the people all of the time. So what's not popular for one is somebody else's favourite. Can't please all the people all of the time. That's, that's how life is. So the changes afoot, most of which you won't notice the difference. But hopefully you'll find a little bit more polish in the videos without starting to do massive edits and stuff like that. Just changing the camera view now and again in a long video is a bit of relief for the people watching, you good people. 
Apparently I'm not allowed to call you avatars, people don't like being called blue people. It was an expression that I was given, I didn't think he'd make that up, I won't be using it again anyway. Right, so the next section, and the last section, is what's in the box. Well what's in the box are the two plants that I took with me. How did they do in the competition? And we came back with three. So for the first time this year, and the, probably the first time in a hell of a long time, we have a new orchid. And on the subject of new orchids, I don't, I can't say definitely, but um, the spices exotic plants that I've bought a lot of plants for online are coming out to play. And they will be at the venue RHS Wisley, which we're taking a coach trip to. So I will get to meet Susa, uh, Susa, sorry, a again. I've only met the, uh, the couple once, and that was at the Welsh Orchid Festival. God, that was a hell of a drive, that was. <laughs> if it's on again this year, I will still probably go, despite it taking three hours to get there. And Lynn will probably come, and Hannah might come, I don't know. But it's a smashing venue. Um, if not very large. But yeah, the RHS show, which is at the end of March, so it's not far away now, um, has got that vendor there selling plants. And on their list of plants, there's often stuff that I quite fancy, but perhaps didn't fancy buying by post and paying for the postage. Well, when you see them, you don't have to pay the postage, do you? We like that. So that's that. Anyway, let's have a look at what's in the box. Whoops, I forgot. Something else that came up frequently is when I'm working, potting, mounting, doing stuff, I'm not close enough and people can't see what's going on. Appreciated. So the camera can be brought in a lot closer. Not, not on my face on what I'm doing. Um, but we're not going to revert to just being hands and a pot. You know, I still like a longer view to get the impression of the whole thing. But more close-up work, more detail for people who are new and want to see exactly what I'm doing, not just a general impression. We'll have some of that. Okay, what's in my box? <laughs> well, obviously the two that went to the show, I already filmed those before I went, so you know what went out, what you don't know is what came in. And I did cause a fuss. I don't mind causing a fuss when it's got a purpose, but um, Lawrence Hobbs is one of the vendors and um, before the show opened to the public I'd already chosen my plant and Lynn put a note on it for me because I didn't have a pen on me just to say Roger's plant pay you later and we stuck it up the back so I'd already chosen mine before the public even came in the door but when I came to pay for it and take it away um, his wife was doing the stall he'd gone off might have gone off for a sleep, I don't know, but he wasn't there. Um, and I said, uh, she wrapped it up in the cellophane, you know, the cellophane case like that, and sort of handed it to me, and I said, I need it covered up. Uh, what do you mean, covered up? I need it wrapped so that you can't see what it is. Frown. I said, it, it's for a video. People like the surprise of, of what have you bought. Oh, I see. So uh, it was okay, but... <laughs> don't think it went down too well. But you do like the surprise, I know you do. Right, so we'll get that out of the way. That will basically show you at least the type of plant that I've got. Cambria. <laughs> and we'll stick that over to one side so we can just get these out. Now, my little Oncidium Tahitian Dancer. That got a second. Back in those stills, you heard me dribbling over an odont type. Those were the only two plants in the section. And there's no way <laughs> mine was going to compete against that. So I only got second because there was only two there. That other plant just stole the show. Well, not quite, but very nearly stole the show. So that's what that was in competition with. Um, nonetheless, I got the second. So that, that's, that's how that one did. Uh, somewhere to put it, floor. Oh, oh, why do I bend down? I know it's going to hurt. And then the zygo. 
This went into the strange class, which is any other orchid not mentioned in the other classes. And you do get some strange entries in there. Well, we got a second in that one as well. And again, seeing what came first, a good specimen-sized plant with a magnificent even blooming over the whole plant. I can't compete with that. You know. As I said, if this had been a stunning specimen plant with five or six spikes, we might have done. <laughs> but we did get a culture award for it on the grounds that some, somebody else in the judges arena obviously has trouble growing zygos as well. So we got a culture award, so we did get that. Um, you, the awards you get, you know, whether you were cups or you know uh, certificates and things like that, you can't bring them away from the show. You have to wait for the next meeting, and um, you have to go up the front and shake hands with the president and get your get your thingy. And of course, next month, March, we haven't got a meeting. We've got a coach trip instead, which you'll enjoy a lot more. So I got a second with both of my plants, and. I was talking to Lynn, I should have taken my Orintherincum. Did I just say that right? Probably. Something like that anyway. Because Lynn was interested in the controversy as well. And somebody else I, that I mentioned I was going to bring that in, they, they looked at me and they said, have you got the real thing? So somebody else knows the story that's not part of the YouTube arena. So we'll get that out of the way. And what did I come home with? Well, we came home with a Cambria. Out of what was there, quite honestly, I wasn't that fussed on bringing anything home. But you can't go to an orchid show and not bring anything home, can you? And on the theory of numbers of orchids and workload, which I've gone over before, we have had losses through this winter, haven't we? Yeah? So numbers are down compared with what they have been. That doesn't mean to say I'm going to bump them straight up again, but I'm pretty sure at Wisley at the end of March we will come home with some goodies as well. So what did we get then? What we got, well, was another Cambria. Another no ID, Oncidium, intergeneric. And out of what was there, this is what I liked. I hope this is still in one piece because she was waggling it around a bit trying to get this paper on. Yes, it survived. Right, can I get this? The easiest way to get that stuff off is just slice it. Oh, my scissors need sharpening. These scissors are normally so sharp. Oh, no, it's all okay. They're normally so sharp you don't need to cut. You can just push them down. But these do need sharpening now. What's happened is um, quite tragic. In the move of the house, obviously not all my stuff got moved out at the same time, and I had, I say had, a sharpening stone, an actual old-fashioned stone that you sharpen knives and scissors on. And it got thrown away before I managed to pack it, so I've lost my sharpening stone. So things like scissors and my best sharp knives might get a bit blunt now till I can find a replacement. Right, what we've got is a, a three bulb plant, not a one bulb plant. These are the things to watch out for with the intergen the Oncidium intergeneric types. Um, well, I can't speak for the states because I don't know, but certainly around the EU, they're going to have come from a mass production unit somewhere in either Germany or Holland or something like that, and they are mass produced and they're you know they're raised in force conditions. So I was just watching the birds while I'm talking. <laughs> you can't see them, can you? Um, they're raised in force forced conditions and um, often they are raised at such a rate that there is only one mature bulb and they still manage to get two flipping spikes out of it. But to tidy the plant up the little straggy bits are taken off and you end up with one bulb in a pot often with very poor roots and the only reason it's standing upright and not falling out of the pot is because it's staked not because the roots are holding it up. But this one isn't too bad. We've got three bulbs and they are a progression. Yeah? 
So this is the oldest bulb, it's still got its leaves. And then the next bulb has still got its leaves and they're in good condition and it's bigger. And then the final bulb is bigger again, obviously still got its leaves, and has produced a spike out of each side. Now, what we've got now is I know this is going to be in rubbish media and it's going to be soaking wet. Shall we prove that? Don't you prove me wrong. Yep, it's in peat. It's absolutely dripping wet. That won't see any water from me for probably a fortnight. And all the roots around the top of the pot, which would be the driest bit, the bit that dries quickest. So that needs sorting out. All those roots will rot. They're not in the best of condition at the moment and there's no growing root tips. But they're not dead. You know, so... There we go. They're not good in the pot, but I wasn't expecting it to be. Now, as far as the blooms are concerned, they are a typical Cambria. It's a branching spike, yeah? So you get multiple blooms off of each side as it progresses. And then eventually it stops branching and just produces single blooms. So, uh, nice spike, all blooms opened. But the spike over this side has got buds still to go. It's a trifle worrying that the top of the spike is open and the buds on the branches aren't yet. But um, I don't see as a, I can see a problem there. That branch has a trapped bud in behind the clips. If I take the clip off like that, that's released that spike now. That doesn't need it. I don't mind it arching, you see, so I, I'm happier for it to be like that, quite honestly. But let's see if I can uh, get you a reasonable close-up of uh, a bloom that's actually facing you. Um, something like that. Hopefully that's sharp. But a beautiful pattern, a lovely combination of colours with the purple, the red, and the red blotches have an outline to them, a paler outline, gives them some sort of form. And then a nice splash of yellow in the lip, which is, well, it's virtually obligatory with oncidium types, the yellow bit in the middle. They've all got that, virtually all of them. And then a paler coloured lip. Um, they're not huge blooms, they're not huge blooms at all. But again, quite large numbers. And this is where I feel sorry for people who perhaps haven't been growing very long, who buy something like that, and then they've got a keep it alive to get a next new growth and the next new growth isn't as big as the one before and possibly doesn't even bloom and then they get another one and they get a spike and it's got six flowers on whereas the spike had 20 blooms on when they bought it that's often the way it's because it's not in such ideal conditions as it once was so it's not going to grow as well so that's what i've got that's what I came home with. I'm quite happy with that. So nice, nice. And, and although those roots aren't brilliant, it's a salvageable plant. It's, it's not going to die or anything dark like that. It's got loads of backup reserves in it because all of those bulbs are still swollen. There's no desiccation going on yet, which tells me straight away that the roots are still currently functioning. They're not brown bread yet. But if that stays wet like that, too long, then they will be, they will rot, and then we will be rootless, which is often the way we get these things. Does it, unless it gives me a clue where it came from? In and outdoor, well that depends where you flip and live, minimum five plus. So that tells me that they may be giving us a clue that that's got a good percentage of odontoglossum in it. Now I can tell that just by looking at the shape of the blooms and the colour patterns that's got odont in it, which is a cool grower. I'd say a minimum of five degrees is pushing your luck and I certainly won't be taking it down that cold because everything else in here will snuff it, or a fair bit of it will. Um, so we won't be doing that. Um, and it's actually come, well, there's a website on the thing that says toporchid.com. Top Orchid's the name of our magazine, <laughs> coincidentally. But that's what you normally get. That's the biggest clue you're going to get, and that is no clue whatsoever, because it's a misused word. Cambria used to mean something a long time ago. Now it's a generic word that mass producers basically mean... It means orchid to them, that's all it means. 
So it's an orchid orchid. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I've got. And um, now in my new scheme of things, it would be around this point that I, that I would say to you, and ah, oh, the little wren's out there on my um, bonsai, the one that desperately needs repotting. Um, he's around all the time, that wren. is likely, if there's two of them, to, to nest in here because it's very sheltered and quiet. I have to watch the cats, obviously. Distraction again. Um, I forgot what I was just going to say now. Yes, in the new scheme of things, in shorter videos, because otherwise it's not going to work, it would be at this point that I would suggest that the video coming up would follow on from this one. Now you see where I'm coming with this. So, you know, and if you're interested in this subject, coming up, if you click on the end screen, it'll take you into another video which elaborates on this subject or which which is about... You, you see one? Yeah? Whereas before, the end screen would just pop up. Well, like I said, a lot of people have legged it by then, haven't they? They're off. <laughs> Getting the kettle on and everything, which is what I need to do. Um, yeah, so that, that's the sort of point at which the words come into the video that I've never done before. So that's a very small change. It doesn't mean to say everybody's going to watch that end screen, the follow-on video, but those that do have stayed with the channel. So they've not only stayed on YouTube, they've stayed with the channel. And that's what YouTube like. So it's not a big deal for you people. You'll hardly notice the difference. You might even find it useful. We shall see. Anyway, that is the end of this one. Thanks for being here. And if you're still here, even better, because these are always long ones, the Sunday ones. Again, that was a debate. Some people said, I can't, I can't be doing with those long videos. I haven't got that much time to spare for one channel. Fair enough. And other people say it's those that I look forward to. So you know, again, can't please all the people. But hopefully we please most of the people most of the time. Is that over-ambitious? I don't know. Anyway, see you next time. The next video will probably be um, a concoction of what came from the show yesterday in some shape or form. That's something else. Some people said they're not too keen on the show videos with the background music. Well, I don't think I've done it very often, actual background music and me talking, but I'm not too keen on that. But most of my show videos have just got music, they got no words, and lots of people said we would prefer you to narrate it. The trouble is it makes me look a bit dim makes me look not very good on the grounds that I'm not going to know the names of the plants, like I would say if I was going, well, most of the plants in here, you know, and, and here's a pretty Phalaenopsis. Well, everybody watching probably knows it's Phalaenopsis, they don't need telling, do they? And I'm not going to know the names, that's the problem. Now, in a couple of weeks' time I will, because all the um, information that has been gathered at the show will come out. Yeah, and there'll be charts of every plant that was entered and, you know, what, what position it came in. Did it get an award? Did it get a cup? All that will be available then. <laughs> and I could tie the names up with the plants. But as of now, I can't. Some I will know, obviously. But um, So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. You'll have to wait and see. And that will probably get posted tomorrow. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.